All right. Hey, folks, welcome to this session of Fedora Studio. I'm here with Sumantra Mukherjee, uh, here to talk about Fedora 41 and Fedora 42 test days. Uh, so this is part of a new approach we're doing for the release parties, having some content and conversations with various folks and contributors in the community. So before I pass it over to Sumantra to talk about test days, uh, I'll you know, he's been a Fedora contributor since 2016, and he's been a longtime member of the Fedora QA team, which is actually how he began his contributions in Fedora. Uh, so he's been around for quite some time. And also I've known him as an open source contributor from even before then, from some time, uh, time in the Mozilla and Firefox community. Uh, and we've even, you know, met on three different continents of the world, uh, all doing Fedora and open source things. So Sumantro, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you to kick off and tell us a little bit about how this release cycle went. And uh, I hear you have some early data and statistics on how this release went from the test days. Hey, Justin, thanks for the info on the on my intro. And I wanted to let's start with what this release had. This release was feature packed. It had a lot of changes and it had things that were very crucial for the that's going to set milestone for the next few releases in Fedora. this release we found out that we are going to have a new dnf which is dnf5 and a dnf5 is a major change as part of that change you get not just a new way to install your packages but it's much faster it's very 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 well written out and yes, as a part of the test days, we did multiple versions of DNF testing. So DNF 5.2, DNF 5.3, we went ahead. We also did testings for Podman, which is another thing that Pedro has been focusing on for some time now. So we did Podman 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3 during this release cycle. One very important thing that test days do is they kind of try to you know, act as uh, the minimum checkpoints between what Fedora project wants to achieve versus what the Fedora Linux currently has. So one of the strategic goals for Fedora project was to enable the entire operating system to have accessible features uh, in the apps and all over the place. So we, we did an accessibility test day where a lot of people gathered up to kind of test all the accessibility tools that Fedora has by default right now. This was done mostly for GNOME. We aim to provide more feedback and get more feedback on KDE and others. We had one important test day, which was the hardware security module, the free IPO test day. This is a little out of the box. We usually do not do enterprise test days, but as, as we all know that Fedora is a very good ground for developers who are basically building out features for RHEL, like CentOS Stream and RHEL going forward. They kind of try to test all of those things upstream, which is a very good thing for us. And they kind of helped us out with a free IPO test day, which was, which was a big hit and a lot of people contributed. This release cycle, we kind of also had a performance test day, which was the power profile daemon in Fedora 41 is by is now going to be tune d by default and this has all this has been the case for some time now it was not just announced as a default so tune d became our default and there was a test day for tune d as a power profile management default so those were the set of questions set of things that we did in uh, test days we did for this particular site yeah, maybe just a quick question here, because I know for some of the, the Linux nerds in the crowd, like the switching the power daemon is kind of a big deal. So I don't know, do yeah. you have any like quick, like highlights of Tune D and like what that might look like? I know that's one specific yeah. thing that the team has tested of a lot, but just kind of an insight onto what's coming for that and like what changes did you have to think about while testing for that one? Yes, so essentially, you know, Tune D, uh, when it was introduced, it came with three different profiles, which was your power saver profile. So when you are out of your battery and you're still running some tasks, but you don't want to run all of your background. So power saver, the balanced, which gives a good amount of throughput, not overutilizing your processor or your performance scores. So it, it was 
it's balanced and then it is performance where you are connected to your um, power supply and you are like just you know blowing up all your vms and whatnot right so those are the three profiles we kind of had to imagine scenarios for like what would happen when you suspend so when you suspend on a performance profile would would it like stop all the activities and go into suspend would it not go into suspend what would happen when you try to uh, run some huge applications and then you literally set them to run at a certain time but then uh, it's on a power saver mode it's on background and it is it is not going to run that's it like let's say you run a no up command and it, it is not going to go that far so we had scenarios in mind which we tested for it went really that's that's one of those crazy things we did this cycle this was kind of very performance tuned and we kind of want to have more of these performance test days because as we go in the Linux ecosystem uh, today to see almost every single operating systems, they have become performant enough. As in all the new, newer generation laptops, they are very beefy. I'm a good amount of processor, and this still can run everything, right? But then when you look at Fedora, we try to have one very solid core where we don't want to have, uh, or rather don't want to put so much amount of uh, stuff on your system that it would just not run on a minimum configuration. So we still try to maintain that low entry of a low barrier to entry in most of the cases and also enabling you to become more accessible with your heart in the entire Linux ecosystem. Yeah, and you know, one thing I think that's really unique here with Fedora is with these test days, these are like public ways that anybody can participate and contribute with the project. So maybe since we're already talking about Tune D, you know, of the family of things that the QA team tests for, what does it look like to participate in a test day for something like this? Like, what do you have to do, you know, if you want to test this Tune D change in Fedora because you think power daemons are cool, what do you have to do for any test day to get started and get involved? So uh, here's the here's the gist of it. You know, the process is a little lengthy, but I, I'll just sum it up into a quick few sentences. Uh, the way we design test days is if you are, it doesn't matter if you are a beginner or an advanced person doing this testing. For a beginner, this is a way, a very good way into learning how the project functions in also in a way how to learn linux operating systems in general so if you're like completely new to linux and you are switching between operating systems this is basically a good way for you to get started and one of the cool things is test days are very bite-sized activity so think about it this way uh, fedora has something called a changes process whenever someone wants to make a change they write a change cross change set which then gets published by um, IFA as a part of the changes process. And then the FESCO votes on it. If they, that gets accepted, we have that for that upcoming release. The intention behind those changes process is to let the community be aware of what's coming in the next release. We as a part of QA team would go around looking for those changes, which might be breaking Fedora in the coming releases. And if we find something that is cool and that needs more testing on a community hub, we would go ahead and announce test days for it. So it is not very necessary that you have to be extremely skilled at what you want to test. It is a good starting ground for you even to learn that technology uh, from ground up. Most of the test cases that you would ideally be running during the test days are written in a very user-driven manner, which means when you read those test cases, they have uh, they, they have a point A, point B, point C, and they are all written in plain English for anybody to read, understand, and execute. The scenarios are covered in plain text. There is hardly or no involvement of writing your own code, unless you really want to, in that case, like. You are all welcome, but it is meant to be a starting point for all of these people that want to get in the project. 
So that's one of the ways that we kind of start looking at testers. That's usually how we do it. And we plan to add more such test days, which is more beginner friendly, and then people can start testing them as, as, as we proceed to Fedora 41 and beyond. Awesome. Well, I know we're getting close to the end of our slot here. So I figure as a reflection question here, looking ahead to Fedora 42, what can the community expect about test days that are coming up in the Fedora 42 lifecycle? So 42, so 41 and 40, 42 and above are all going to have these new kind of test days, what we call as rawhide test days. Now, rawhide, as the community might know, their nightly image is built for Fedora every day. And essentially, that's the latest and greatest of all Fedora, right? And then all the developers, they even before they announce the chain sets, they put things into Rawhide. And then Rawhide has the latest and greatest stuff. You, you can actually use that nightly image to do a lot of things. As a part of the Rawhide test days effort, we basically want to get very early testing feedback on things which are very important for the project. One of the basic examples is, let's say, Podman. Now, Podman releases uh, after a long time. There, there are like major versions come after a very long amount of time. But in between are so many features that get attached that we never test for, usually. But then as a part of the Rawhide test days, you, you could find them testing minor versions of Podman. So like 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, would continue as a part of 42 test days. And uh, something like like we are having right now, so like, for example, we are having this cool Anaconda web UI test day starting today. And then you know, if, you, if you were to actually go ahead and test it by the time release party happens, you should be able to enter your feedback. And it, it would be a nice way to do it, right? It would be, that's exactly how we kind of want to extend the, the test days initiatives. So that's the 42 and beyond plans. Excellent. Well, we can go ahead and wrap up here. One last thing before we close, where can people uh, go to find out more about Fedora test days and test weeks? Where's the best place to look? So the best place to look would always be Pagyar Fedora QA issues. That's where that's the tracker for uh, test days. The test days app highlights all the upcoming test days. And if you want, if you are curious, if you have already contributed to test days and you want to find your name, we do this cool publication called Heroes of Fedora. And you guys are namely the heroes of Fedora. You guys can find your name by searching through the posts that come up on community blog. We are going to have one for 41. The 39 and 40 are already published. If you are somebody who has contributed to 39 and 40, Please go ahead, search your name, post them on your socials. That would look so cool on behalf of the project. I'm so glad you called out the Heroes of Fedora column because that has long time been one of my favorite columns on the community blog. Well, thanks for your time and joining us here today in the Fedora Studio, Sumantro, and we'll see you in the next Fedora release cycle. Thanks a lot, Justin.